Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Alice Talk. I'm Luis Sabino, uh, Director of Admission and Financial Aid at Overlake, and so happy to have you with us. Uh, I'm guessing some of you have uh, possibly attended some of our other Alice Talks, but for those of you for whom this may be the first time you've joined one, um, I'll just say by way of introduction that you know, this year is a little bit of a different year for us. And while in a normal year, we would be um, welcoming you on campus and trying to connect you with as many different people within our school community as we can, um, it's just not a possibility for us this year. And so we are focused on trying to um, uh, bring the resources to you in a virtual sense. And so that's what these OWLs talks are about. And they uh, have different themes. And so today's uh, theme is the arts at Overlake. So before, before I introduce Aaron and, and we jump into that, I just want to point your way to uh, some resources that I think can be helpful as you go through this process of learning about the school and about the admission process. And so I am going to uh, share my screen here. Um, bear with me just a second. Uh, there we go. And so what you should be seeing here is our website. And so one of the things we've uh, tried to do this year is to really bolster our website and the content that's available on it. So many of the questions that families have about the school uh, and about our programs, you can find more of that information on our website. So um, uh, I, I can show you here uh, from the front of the website, you'll see there's a menu button and from here you can uh, you can find all sorts of information about the school including the academic program so today we're going to be talking about the arts and if you just click on that uh, art section under curriculum it'll bring you to our arts page which gives you a general overview of the arts um, the courses that are available the philosophy of the department and, and how how a lot of that is structured uh, um, I know Aaron's going to probably touch on some of this today but any information that you kind of want to go back and dig more into, this is a great place to do that. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now, and uh, I think I'll probably pop back on uh, here. Um, and say, uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce Erin Gabriel, who is our who is our arts department chair, and, and I know she she'll introduce herself, and then. Um, and then answer any questions you have about our arts department. And I guess probably one other thing I should point out just in terms of how this works, you should see a little Q&A section on the right hand side of your screen. Feel free to type in any question you have about the arts at Overlake or just in general about Overlake and we'll either answer it in that um, in that chat box or um, we, uh, Jasmine, my colleague who's off screen, We'll read some of those questions um, to be answered on air. So with that, I would like to introduce Sarah Gabriel, our Arts Department Chair. Hi, everybody. Um, it's great to be with you. Thank you, Lou. Um, and thanks, Jasmine, for everything that you're doing today. Um, so my name is Erin Gabriel. I am the Arts Department Chair. I also teach choral music and I co-teach a musical theater class. I'm the music director for our theater productions um, when they're musicals. And I am also the parent of two current Overlakers. I have a daughter in 11th grade and a son in the ninth grade. And I'm also the parent of an alumni uh, from the class of, she was the class of 2012. Um, this is my 26th year at Overlake. I always, um, and it's a little crazy that I, when I say that out loud, but um, I uh, hopefully I wear a lot of hats, but hopefully I can answer all the arts questions and give some insights into the rest of the school as well, if you'd like that. Um, in terms of an introduction to our department, I'll just say a few things before we get to some questions. Um, the arts at Overlake, uh, one of the reasons that I have, I think one of the reasons you stay in a place for so long is when you know that the school really believes and values uh, the part that you play in the school community. And the arts has always been a part of the whole package at Overlake. It's not, it's not a specialist thing that your kids get pulled out to go and do arts. 
um, it's actually part of the school day for everybody at Overlake, for all the students at Overlake. Certainly in the middle school, there are arts requirements there. They rotate just as many times as your math and social studies, science, um, and all of the other core classes. And in the high school, we have a number of graduation requirements. So over the four years, students have the opportunity to take four different semesters of the arts uh, in a variety of things. So um, it's, it's such a valued part and such a pillar, I think, of what we do um, when we value our academics and our experiential education and our arts and our athletics, um, service learning and all of those things all together. So it's really a joy to teach in a place where I feel really secure and knowing that this school really believes in what we what we uh, what we teach kids uh, and how that is a part of their Overlake experience. So I think that's a good overview. Um, I'm happy to answer some questions, Jasmine, if you have them. Sure, thanks, Erin. Currently, we're waiting for questions to roll in, but I guess one thing um, maybe some families out there are curious about uh, if you could speak a little bit more, Erin, about how arts at Overlake has adapted to online learning, uh, what that looks like, or maybe a class that you can give an example of. Sure. Um, well, <laughs> that's such a uh, that's kind of a loaded question. Yeah, I, I teach choir pretty much. Uh, that's not allowed right now. Um, you can sing at home. We would not be able to sing, obviously, if if we came to hybrid. Um, especially the performing arts have had to pivot. Well, all of it, all of the arts have had to pivot quite a bit. Visual art, drama and music, which are the three sub departments within our within the overarching arts department. Um, in the music world, we have shifted our focus last week, last uh, spring when we went hybrid. All teachers at Overlake had to had to do that pretty quickly. Uh, we had to learn some new tools to teach our courses online. Some are some adapt to that a little bit better than others. Uh, in the arts, it was it was quite a learning curve. Um, and what we all had to do was decide what what skills and practices were really, really essential that we really wanted kids to learn, knowing that we couldn't have a final concert or a final performance on our stage, a theater production or knowing that an art teacher wouldn't be able to walk around a room and actually look at the individual work that students were doing. So we spent quite a bit of summer uh, of time this summer, all of us working on um, new techniques to keep our to keep our classes energetic and as hands on as we possibly can while doing it um, on a screen. It's really hard uh, in my world as a singer. It's really hard to sing for me to sing and know that the kids are singing in their own house, but I can't hear them. So we have lost in the performing arts. We've lost quite a bit um, in terms of the daily connection and community that happens just within our performing classes. Um, but I think I, I'm really proud of the things that we are doing. Uh, both both drama classes that are happening right now that involve a production. And um, this is something that people might be interested to know. One thing at Overlake that's really wonderful is that the plays and musicals you see on our stage generally all come out of classes. They're not, well, let's just do this after school or let's just do a volunteer, you know, we'll practice at lunch and then we'll put on a show. Uh, these are these come out of classes, so there's a full blown curriculum that goes along with the performances that we put on stage. There are a few exceptions to that, like the all school musical. Um, but uh, by and large, all of our drama performances come from classes. So one way that we've adapted in the drama world is that we are writing our own pieces this year. Um, I am working with Bill Johns on the upper school advanced musical theater production. Our kids are writing um, stories of immigrants in 1919 that landed in Ellis Island um, and were put on, wait for it, a quarantine ship um, because 
It's very timely, I'm just going to say. Um, but it's been fantastic because the kids are, the, it, we were going to put on Into the Woods, which is a brilliant, sophisticated, super fun Sondheim musical. And these kids came to class knowing that we were absolutely not going to be able to do that. Um, so once we grieved that loss, we put our heads together and we came up with um, a writing project and one of the students in the upper school is actually a composer. She's composing original music and songs and we are writing scenes between all of these immigrants um, and bringing together a bunch of different cultures um, and it's pretty exciting. It's pretty, it's pretty exciting. Shea Fleming is doing the same thing with her seventh and eighth grade class. But um, I guess the shorter answer to that is just that um, everybody has had to pivot. That word is being thrown around a lot, but it really is what we had to do. And I'm, I'm proud that the teachers worked really hard all summer in order to make sure that they had some really rich, uh, robust curriculum to get to the kids this fall when we came back. Sounds good, Erin. Thank you. And I, you had mentioned Shay Fleming. She's a teacher. Um, I think she's been doing her class on campus, or at least can you talk a little bit more about what that can look like as well? Sure. So Shay is one of our middle school drama teachers. Um, she's teaching an upper school dance class um, also. And teachers during this time, if we prefer to, to teach at campus, sometimes that's allowed. Um, I mean, it is definitely allowed if there's enough space. Um, and so teachers are able to teach from their classroom. Um, and for Shay teaching a dance class, she uses the black box, which is one of our drama classrooms. It's also a dance studio. It has a mirror background, a mirror on one wall. Um, she really uh, is decided that she's preferring to teach from rather than in her home. She's teaching from school, which is also nice for the kids to see that classroom, to be in that classroom, um, and just just to see her move within that space. So a lot of teachers are teaching from Overlake, from their from their normal classrooms, um, if that serves them best, which I think is a really nice thing to be able to have that to have the option to do that. For some classes, it's just so much easier. I know that in science, for instance, it's just a great place to teach when you have your laboratory right with you, rather than trying to do it from your kitchen, I guess. Great, Erin, thank you. Um, we are starting to get some questions. Um, a question a family has um, is, how are fifth graders introduced to arts curriculum? So in the fifth grade, uh, it's a great question. In the fifth grade, arts happen, like I said, throughout the day um, in the same rotation as all of the other class, as all of their other courses throughout the day. Uh, they are on a trimester basis. They have one trimester of music, one trimester of visual art, and another trimester of drama. And they cycle through those throughout the school day. Those are mandatory and they're divided into three different groups and they they all go in different groups to different classes depending on the time of year. Kids in the fifth grade are also uh, are also have the opportunity to do beginning strings or beginning bands so they can start a string instrument or a brass or woodwind or percussion instrument after school. Um, during during this time of COVID, however, we are the the strings class is meeting after school on Mondays and Wednesdays. The band class for fifth graders, I think, is meeting during, uh, it's a Tuesday, Wednesday afternoon block, which we call it zero block. It's not zero anymore because it doesn't happen early in the morning, but it is a designated space within the day. So that's how, that's how fifth grade arts works. We like to give them a broad range of experiences um, and also let them start an instrument. And, as a choir teacher, I will say also during their fifth grade music portion of the trimester system, they get some really basic music theory, um, working with their voices, and they even form a choir for a portion of that. So they get vocal experience and music reading experiences as well. Thanks, Erin. Uh, there's also a question about plays and participation. Um, can you maybe explain more about 
the type of plays that happen at Overlake um, or musicals as well? Um, sure. Was that, is, is it uh, based on grade level or just sort of overall? Uh, overall, maybe if you could just address that with the attendees. Oh, I hear your baby too, oh, Jess. Sorry, yes. That's a <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm going to move Oh, oh. <laughs> um, brings back those memories. Um, so performances at Overlake, like I said, most of the performances that are produced and presented on our stage come out of classwork. Um, in the fifth grade, in the fifth grade, for instance, I mentioned the drama trimester. Every trimester that there's a drama class in the fifth grade, there is a sharing of what they worked on for the parents. So there is a performance aspect to that class. In the middle school, um, especially in the fifth and sixth grade, the skills that they're learning in drama are about expression and listening and sharing. Um, and creating an ensemble. It's a lot about group dynamic, a lot about, um, like I said, listening to one another, building confidence, building your voice, watching your physical, working with your physical movement to create stories. I don't, I don't, I can't tell you all of the exact units in their curriculum, but I can tell you that there is always, uh, there is always a unit on folk tales, one on, usually on Shakespeare, um, doing some sort of a devised program where they are, where, where they're writing things and performing things for each other. Um, and then they usually share that out. In the seventh and eighth grade, we have uh, elective programs. So all seventh and eighth graders get to choose two electives per year. And um, those depending if they, I'm just going to I get off on a tangent. Let me just say with the in the drama classes again, there's a seventh and eighth grade play. Shea Fleming is directing that one this year. Um, and again, that is a performance on the stage with costumes. And you know, when we're in real in normal times, those are being produced on the stage with costumes and lights and full production values. And then in the upper school, we have advanced drama, which results in a um, in a play. We have advanced musical theater. We also have the all school musical, which happens um, every other year. Last year we did it, we performed Susical, and it was actually the last thing that happened before we flipped on our end and went to, to uh, went to online learning. Um, and then we also do a fifth and sixth grade play every year. It is usually a play with music or a musical. Um, we do that in the spring of the opposite year. So that's a show that is probably going to happen this year. And again, that just depends on if we're back in person or not. But beyond the performance classes, the drama program includes, and I think this is really important um, because I think, I, I think generally there's the assumption that a drama class means you're putting on a show. But at Overlake, a drama class means it could be a class on improvisation. It could be a dance class. It could be a technical theater class. Uh, it could be a stagecraft class. Uh, so there's a lot of different things that go into to drama classes that teach kids skills beyond just putting on a show and being on stage. That's great to know, Erin. Thank you. We have another question about um, how is mindfulness incorporated into the arts curriculum? Oh, that's such a that's an a, that's an amazing uh, <laughs> that's an amazing question. Um, I'm so happy that somebody asked about mindfulness. Um, one of the things that I've always uh, this is such a great question. Um, over the arts are a really important, um, a really important balance at Overlake. I think that's the first thing that I will say. Um, one of the reasons that I love teaching choir is that when students walk into my classroom, I can ask them, I can remind them that they can leave their backpacks outside. They generally don't need their laptops. Uh, it is about creating a community together without uh, the stress of academics, other academics, um, and it's, we often take a moment to breathe. Um, music ensembles, drama classes, there's a really inherent importance in listening, breathing, and creating connection between people, which 
which again makes me really sad to even talk about right now because it's the thing that teachers are really um, it's the thing we really miss the most uh, is seeing our class is seeing our kids and being able to connect with them as as young people with ideas and expression that they that they want to give that is so hard to do on a screen. Um, we uh, I am so glad that we offer a dance class. I am so glad that one of our drama teachers, Sarah Fitzpatrick, is running a middle school yoga class, a yoga club. Um, the idea that in the upper school, we encourage students to take a class in at least two of the three areas, visual art, music, or drama. And we do that so that kids have a broadening of their experience. It's very easy to say, well, all I ever wanna do is sing. I don't wanna do anything else but sing. But some of the best singers really need to experience what it's like to um, paint a picture or do photography or do something in another um, in another realm. So I would say that mindfulness shows up in our department in the way that we have made in the way that we have structured our requirements and in the classes that we choose to teach and in the way that teachers um, share their curriculum with their kids. Thanks, Baron. It's a great answer. Um, can you also tell us more about um, a parent has found out about Arts Fest? Um, can you tell us about your um, experience with Arts Fest and also what it's what it's like? I would love to talk about Arts Fest. Um, Arts Fest is an annual program that happens in the spring. Uh, it usually, if you're on campus that day, it feels like all day is Arts Fest, but for the general public and parents, Arts Fest happens in the evening, usually, or the late afternoon. It is, a, it is an event where we honor and really try and focus on our visual artists, and um, it al but it also incorporates music and theater as much as possible also. One thing about the performing arts is that we get to stand on a stage in a concert and share what we do, share everything our classes has done, and people clap for us and we bow and we just, it's its this wonderful experience. In the visual art, you don't get that. In the visual art, visual art is more, uh, it's more individual and you put things up on walls or you have a showing and you hope that people see it and you hope that people reflect. Uh, and after a while, we, we did, for early on, we did Arts Fest and it was a celebration of all of the arts. And we and long ago, we did sort of like, not awards, but like MVP of the drama program. And it felt, after a while, we realized it just felt so, um, it didn't feel right because everybody uh, worked, everybody put, so you know, it's hard to say, give an award to someone who was the actor, but not the person who built the set or designed some incredible chandelier or something that came down and we started really talking about how to incorporate visual arts so it's a celebration of visual arts it runs for two to three hours there's an art walk around campus we have kids arts art projects up all over campus we have food in the campus center the jazz band usually plays outside we usually have um, depending on the students We've had face painting or balloon art or improvisation, little improvisation workshops or henna art, um, depending on what's, depending on what's, uh, what kids want to contribute. And then there's usually something that does happen on the stage. We have an art competition where um, they have like 90 seconds to do a chalk drawing of something that has is flashed up on the stage and the audience is like, you know, clapping and cheering for them and the kids all participate in that. Um, and it's a big event for our off for our booster club, our booster group, which is called Overlake Friends of the Arts. And that is um, we call them OFTA for that reason. And it is one of the big events that they sponsor um, and help us to encourage everybody to come out on a beautiful, hopefully beautiful spring day. To celebrate the arts at to celebrate the arts at Overlake and all of the all of the work that the students have done. Great, thanks, Erin. Makes um, me sad because we didn't get to have it last year. 
when you said arts fest i thought oh no it makes it's me so really true. sad because we couldn't do it last year yeah and it's extremely popular too um Erin, I'm not sure too. I'm sorry if I missed this earlier when I was putting down my son, but um, maybe for the callers or those that are on the call, can you describe what the facilities are like on campus? Um, tell us more about the Fulton. Sure. And, and yeah, yeah. So the so um, the performing arts and the performing arts building, uh, the Fulton Performing Arts Center, and the Art Barn, which is what it's called. Um, they were built in 2000, they were finished being built in 2000, so about 20 years old. Um, and, but they are incredibly well thought out, well designed facilities for, for a school. We are really, 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 really lucky. I will start by talking about the art barn. So the art barn has three classrooms. It has two art studios um, for drawing, painting, photography, um, multimedia art, um, middle school art, and then one industrial design studio, which is where uh, Molly Montgomery is our industrial industrial arts teacher. She teaches wood shop um, and sculpture and industrial design. She teaches sixth grade and fifth grade art as well. So a student at Overlake could have a class in either one of those visual art studios. We have three classrooms and three teachers. And then, um, and then we also have digital design. We have graphic design and photography classes as well. Sometimes those happen in those art studios or they happen in our um, media lab. So it just depends on where the teacher uh, needs to teach those classes. And then in the performing arts building, we have a 300 seat theater proscenium stage which I know that there's some great pictures. I've thought about the fact that I should have it as a virtual background, though. I think that would be kind of a good thing for me to have as my virtual background so I could show everybody. Um, that is where we have uh, our stagecraft class actually has their class on in that space. Then we have a drama classroom, which is the Black Box Theater, as I mentioned before, which is a classroom for drama, a classroom for dance, um, it can also be a performance space for smaller ven as a smaller venue. There's a whole lighting system and rigging within that built within that space so that it can also we can house smaller performances there, which is actually really, really it's really nice. And then we have a band room and a choir room. Um, the choir room doubles as a strings room sometimes. And if all goes as well, we have our South Annex right now, which is which will be our middle school string space once those math teachers move into that other new building that they're getting. So we have, um, you know, band, choir, orchestra, drama, visual art. It all goes from fifth through 12th grade. So all students on the Overlake campus share all of those spaces. So a fifth grade drama student could have their could have their drama class on the stage and a, and a beginning band student would have their class in that band room and perform their concert on that stage. So um, they're really, really, they're really, really nice spaces. Um, I'll just say that we're really, really lucky. We're really lucky. Yes, we are. I love our facilities and hopefully we're going to be back in them one day soon. I know. <laughs> um, Okay, Erin, we have another question from a parent that has a comment and also a question as a follow up. Uh, based on what the parent has seen on the website, it seems as though the middle school has more traditional art classes, whereas the high school or upper school has a variety of art classes such as photography, mixed media, etc. Um, Erin, are these available for middle school students as well or maybe at club level? or? So, sure, that's a great, that's a good question. Um, in the middle school, as far as visual art, so that was a, that was mostly about visual art. So um, in the fifth and sixth grade, the goal of those classes in the fifth and sixth grade is to expose those kids to some very, um, to, to skill building, artistic vocabulary, um, making decisions about, you know, creativity and what's right, what's every, there's no wrong answers, you know, in visual art. So it's a lot about getting them comfortable with 
different media. Um, so sixth grade art, the units within sixth grade art, for instance, deal with not only drawing and painting, but some clay and some sculpture and some, you know, making um, making lit light up boxes or making um, different. Um, it, if the visual arts people heard me saying they would be rolling their eyes because I will not be able to express it in the right way. But there's a variety of projects in the fifth and sixth grade and the and that is by design. So they get lots of exposure. So in the in the seventh and eighth grade, they have a number of electives that they can take. They can take drawing, which is just a drawing class, just a painting class, wood shop. They can take um, um, uh, an experimental design is the other one. So experimental design also works with, um, again, all those different mediums of whether it's some a little bit of graphic design, you know, art and technology related things. Um, so we try, even though we don't have an industrial design class for middle school, they're learning the vocabulary so that when they get to the high school, there's also just, um, there's a limit on the number of classes kids can take. And there's a number, there's a limit on the number of classes that teachers can teach. So everybody has a full time, you know, a full load of, of classes that they're teaching, but they're really good. You know, we're, I think we're really good at trying to make sure that the kids at one, le at one level are building skills to build up to the next level. There's a painting class, for instance, there's a painting class for a seventh and eighth grader, but it's a different kind of painting class for a high schooler. You know, the projects are just a little bit different. And if, if somebody has a has particular experience in that medium, the teacher works really hard to make sure that they can give that, that student will have projects that may be at a higher level depending on their experience. So I hope that answers that question. Thanks, Aaron. We have another question from a family asking if a student has participated in plays but has not done musicals before, how do you get them to warm up? Um, is this something you encounter with students? How do I get them to uh, I'm sorry? warm up? How do you get them to warm up or at least feel comfortable starting oh. something new? Oh yeah, okay, so well, this is, um, this is another one of the great things I think about how we structure um, something like the all school musical, which is which is an option for everybody to audition for. Um, you know, there have been people, there have been kids who have auditioned for that. They saw a show, they thought it looked really fun, but they've never done it. And it's really scary. Um, I have to say, I am I am somebody who would, if you ask me to sing something, I'd be very happy to sing something for you. But if you ask me to draw like, a horse, I would, it, it terrifies me. So everybody has their own comfort level. Um, one thing I say all the time as the music director is this is a safe, safe space. Um, this is a place where the, all of the arts require you to take some risks. And even, the, even though it's scary, we are here to help you do that. We do not expect people to, we don't expect a student to come to Overlake and say, well, I'd like to be in the choir and I'm already a solo singer. We expect you to come and say, that seems interesting, I'd like to try it. In my class, I have a variety of kids who love to sing and would be very happy to sing a solo or have no experience, but they were not going to learn an instrument, so they weren't sure what to do and they didn't know anything. And so this is where they ended up. Um, our job as teachers is to try and make them feel comfortable, give them confidence and help help create an experience so they feel like, wow, I learned something. I learned something really, really. I learned something new that I, I wasn't sure I was going to learn. Um, and as uh, you know, as far as an individual feeling that confidence and under learning learning that they do they do have the they do have the confidence to do it will be right here with you it's something that takes time um, and judging from what I have seen some of our kids do and I mean one of one of the greatest parts about my job is that I see kids you know from fifth grade on and then I graduate I see them graduate as seniors and 
to watch the development of some of these kids at a place like Overlake because we're all on the same campus and we all teach them all is really fantastic. Um, so our job is to create a space where kids feel like, okay, I'll try. Thanks, Erin. Um, we also have a sort of a follow-up question. You mentioned earlier OFTA, um, or for families who are interested in participating in arts, what kind of um, opportunities are there for family members to get involved uh, with OFTA? Sure, so um, we are so, so lucky to have, I mean, not every department has an OFTA. We say that all the time. We are so, so lucky. We have an amazing group of parents who we meet once a month. We have a, a chair of the OFTA, OFTA president and secretary and all of that. They, we, we have meetings and they, they find ways with my guidance, I guess I will say, to support the arts teachers as best they can. Um, OFTA was founded because it was, it was seen and recognized that the things we do are so different from other classrooms that there are so many, there are so many extra things. Uh oh, my phone was ringing. There are so many extra things that um, arts teachers could provide if only we had just a little bit more of, you know, of something. So generally, they absolutely do things like provide cookies and refreshments and things at the plays, and they do some fun, and they do some fundraising. But we're not going to actually do fundraising this year, and um, we are. We had our first meeting, and we're really striving to to decide and to think about like what are ways that we can support these kids while we're online, you know, while while these kids are in boxes, and what what can they do? But um, we have found through Ofta, we have found people with building and construction skills and photo mounting, you know, volunteer work that is um, just crucial in order to get Arts Fest up and running. Um, I always need someone to help me inventory the choir dresses and tuxedos that I have the kids wear. And, you know, there's just a, there's a, a number of different things. Um, and we've found some of the greatest people who, with those special skills, uh, whether it's sewing or taking pictures or helping build sets. So, um, it, it's a it's a really fun group too. Great, thanks, Erin. Um, I think we're all caught up on questions. Um, I'll wait to see if there are any other incoming ones. Uh, oh, there's one that just popped up. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> does Overlake have any outside guest artists come in occasionally and share their talent with students? Yes, we absolutely do. Um, that's another thing that Ofta Ofta funding provides for is the opportunity for us to have guest artists whose, I mean, all of the arts teachers have a specialty. We all do, we, we all have our own specialty and we can teach our specialty. But if you are teaching, for instance, Danielle Troy is teaching multimedia art. And if she's teaching multimedia art and she has an amazing, amazing person who does like large structure, large, large installments with glass or something or just something really interesting um, that affords us the opportunity to bring in some artists and guest artists right now uh, everything is available to us right now we're trying to find that little silver lining and that is that you know we could bring in a theater artist from new york or a film actor from somewhere or some you know because they're just coming to a zoom call so Right now, we're really looking at how to how to get guest artists into our curriculum. Um, we have to work it into the things that we've planned, but um, we always, whether we're online or not, we always like to bring people in to work with our students. Great, thank you. So I much. had um, I had one other thing that I wanted to say um, that yes. it just occurred to it occurred to me when we were talking about Arts Fest because mm -hmm. one of my favorite one of my favorite memories of Arts Fest is the kids who perform, for instance, in the jazz band or the kids who perform in the choir um, running up the hill from the lacrosse practice or running in from their tennis match. Um, 
Overlake kids do a lot of things, and one of the and I think one of the things that we're really proud of is that we try and make it cool for kids to be sports kids, to be athletes, and also honor their love of whatever is artistic. Um, I had the entire soccer team in the back row of my choir one year. Um, we had the entire lacrosse team come to opening night of a of a show where, you know, the, the lacrosse goalie was in his first role in a play and that whole lacrosse team was there in the front row on opening night. Um, those kids that are in the fields or on the courts or anywhere they're doing athletics, those are always the same kids, mostly the same kids who are also performing on stage or creating sculptures or building sets. And um, it's a pretty, it's the, it, it's pretty awesome. And you see the kids and you go, wasn't that guy just down on the field? And now he's singing baritone in the Y chromatones, which is the acapella group, you know? It's, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. And we try and create that, um, we try and create that vibe at Overlake where kids know that they will be honored for all the things they want to do. That is so neat. I love the support all around and just uh, being there for each other just uh, with varying interests too. It's, it's very Overlake. That's the Overlake way. Okay, Overlake. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we also had another question that popped in. Um, on the website, it shows that you have an orchestra. Um, Aaron, can you tell us how large it is? Um, how, how many students? Also, um, it looks like the student plays the harp. Do you need a harpist? Also, does your campus have a harp? Um, we always need a harpist. Let me just <laughs> say that right now. Yes, we need a harpist. Um, our orchestra director is Mark Lotz. Um, our orchestra right now is, I think, around 30. I, actually, I just had that number. I think it's around 30 kids right now, primarily 9th through 12th graders. However, if there is a 7th or 8th grader, at, you know, if there is a student who has a proficient, is proficient at a certain level, we will allow him or her to play in that particular group. Um, it gets a little tricky. I will say it gets a little bit tricky simply because of the timing and sometimes it doesn't work for um, a student to take the orchestra if they're in middle school, but um, the school does have a harp. We do, I think that's right. We do have a harp. We do have um, a, uh, we do always have a need and I, and I think I should let Mark, you know, Mark Lotz is the orchestra director, L-O-T-Z. If you email him at M-L-O-T-Z at overlake.org, he can tell you more about that. Now I'm worried that we don't have a harp, but we need a harp. We always need a harp. We always utilize kids who have a harp. It's, they're so rare and so wonderful. And it, it'll, what that does is it allows Mark to do more repertoire that, that features a harp when we have, when we have a harpist. So, so yes. Great, thank you so much, Erin. Um, it looks like we've answered all the questions that have come in regarding arts. Erin, um, thank you for your time and also sharing a glimpse of the arts program that is so robust at Overlake. Um, I guess I will turn it over to Lou. Sure, thanks, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much, Erin. Yeah. Thanks, Erin, really appreciate your time today and uh, you know hearing all about the arts program. I have to say that, um, I've worked at a number of schools in my career, and I'm consistently impressed by, um, you know, what our kids are able to do as they um, participate in our arts program. And um, I would just second the the um, the spirit of uh, Overlake and kids doing lots of different things from sports to arts to clubs, and, and I think that that really is one of the things that makes the Overlake experience special. So, um, so I'm going to wrap up here. And before I do, I just want to share a few more resources with you all um, as you um, uh, continue to explore the school and the admission process. So I'm, I'm once again going to share my screen and um, just sh show you a few more things here that I think are important to see. Um, 
So if you actually uh, go to our website, we have this page on the admission part of the website called Virtually Visit Overlake. And I, I'm guessing that many of you have been to this. This is a page that we'll be continuing to update as we go through the season. Um, and has, it already has our visual tour. It has some of the, the out, out talks. And as we add more events and more electronic resources, this is a place that you can come back to to, to, to learn a little bit more about Overlake even though we can't have you on campus this season. Additionally, we have a Facebook page, um, and we'll, we'll be updating that throughout the season with um, other bits of content and links to, to uh, um, other important uh, pieces of the admission process. And then finally, if you're interested in actually applying to Overlake, we manage our application through uh, a system called Ravenna. It's a system that we share in common with many of the other independent schools in the Seattle area. And so once you start your application in the Ravenna system, you'll see, you'll come to, you'll, you'll have a page that looks a lot like this. This is a sample page. And so this is really the, the one-stop shop for everything you do from an, uh, the application process. Um, this is where you can fill out forms that are involved in the process when there are uh, events and um, interviews and that kind of thing, those kinds of things to sign up, they'll be available on this page. And all throughout the process, um, you'll be able to manage what uh, what you've already submitted and what's been uh, processed and that kind of thing. Um, the final thing that I'll point out is we do have a, a robust financial aid program and we, we seek to make the Overlake experience accessible to as many different people as we can, regardless of what their family's resources are. And so um, the financial aid process is a process that operates alongside the admission process, but it's a separate process. So we're need blind in admission. Um, but if we're going to offer a place to a student and they qualify for financial aid, um, we, uh, we uh, award that, we, we give that financial aid award at the same time we offer the, uh, the place in the class so that families can make an informed decision about um, not just the school, but the cost of the experience. And so if you're interested in applying for financial aid, we manage our financial aid application through a system called School and Student Services. And um, they've just launched their, um, their system for this upcoming year. And so you should shortly find a link to that from the admission part of our website. So if you have any questions about any of it, always feel free to uh, reach out to us in the admission office. Um, so with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I think I'll probably come back on the screen here in a second. There I am. And, uh, and just say thank you so much for joining us today. Um, if you have any other questions about the school, about the admission process, about the arts program, or really anything, feel free to reach out to us in the admission office. Myself, uh, Jasmine, who you heard, Shawnee, who's behind the scenes here, and Devin, um, we're, we're happy to answer any questions you have. Um, and if we don't have the answer to the question, we can put you in touch with someone who can, can address it. So with that, I'll say thank you for joining us and have a great day. Take care.